Hey guys! So, as many of you may be aware, I lost my father to cancer two years ago. And I was struggling a lot to continue to, throughout the grieving process, and be able to really cope with what I was feeling, what I was going through. And so I went to the internet to try and find um, YouTube videos or just any kind of articles that would help me with coping with the pain and being able to truly feel better in the long run and possibly move on as much as you possibly can when you're dealing with something as tragic as this. And I was very surprised to find that there weren't any really good resources. For the most part, they just said, yeah, you're gonna be depressed, um, you know, take time off, blah, blah. But there wasn't a lot just teaching you how to deal when you're really going through it, especially when you're having those really bad days. And I am lucky that I have a mom who works in social work and she actually works with patients that are going um, through the grieving process or whose family members are about to pass away. So um, she was able to really guide me and help me out and um, also my amazing therapist. And I've been able to kind of come up with a way for me to cope with the grieving process and not dwell on it and not let it drown me in the sadness. And because of this, I've decided to share it with people because it's come to my attention that a lot of people are going through stuff that's similar or um, or the same. In this case, a, a lot of people have talked to me and reached out to me about how they've lost their parents, they've lost an important loved one, a family member, a friend, and a lot of them actually don't understand this, especially if you haven't gone through this, but even before the person has passed away, you're already going through an incredible emotional roller coaster because you already know that the possibility that you could lose that person is there. And that's why I decided to make this video. I will make it in Spanish later on um, so that people, everyone can um, use it and hopefully it'll help you guys. By the way, I came up with 13 things that have really, really helped me out and it's been a huge lifesaver. And I promise you that if you're going through something, something similar, it will definitely, definitely, definitely help you out and it's gonna be amazing. So, um, the first one is eating healthier. Okay, okay, I know what you're saying, what you're thinking, you're probably thinking like, oh, I don't know, because I'm feeling sad, so I'm gonna go eat a whole bunch of ice cream. And what I mean by eating healthier, sure, you should take care of yourself, you shouldn't, um, well, everything should be balanced, let's just call it that, right? Everything in moderation, as my dad used to say, um, is always okay, but what I mean by that really is to listen to your body. So, yes, you should take care of your body, so obviously eat stuff that makes you feel good, that doesn't take away your energy, that doesn't give you like stomach aches. Like for instance, I, <laughs> um, I should not be having any lactose ever, and so I still do it every once in a while, so I have to kind of balance it out. And it's important to listen to your body. And maybe sometimes you're having a really bad day and you're really craving ice cream, eat the ice cream, but then make sure that you balance your health in other ways because when your health starts declining, um, it's not gonna help with the grieving process in any way. Um, the second one is exercising. So, okay, once again, I get it. You know, I used to really hate exercising. It was not my thing. Um, I finally found something that I like. So that's good, but if you're still in that mo in that place where you don't really know what you like, what I mean by exercise is not actually go out to the world <laughs> into a gym and work out. I mean, um, do something that has you moving around and you get to leave your house. Because when you're going through this process and when you're really grieving, you need to get out there and movement helps so much. So I recommend, you know, even if you can go on a walk, if you have a dog, walk it, 
Um, if you even go to like your a grocery store that's right across the street, if you can go to the mall and walk, I mean, the point is that you get your body moving a little bit. Um, if you can even get a workout in, like a real one, go to the gym or something, awesome. If you play a sport, awesome. If you dance, even better. I'm going to the club, that's a thing. And the point is that you get your body moving and those endorphins in and that really, really helps. And it it helps on those really bad days where you're just feeling really down, really down, really down and you need to get out. It's not good to stay in every single day, especially when it first happens. I know you're gonna wanna just stay in bed, but um, it's important to get out there. Uh, number three is knowing the pain will come and go. Like people say, it comes and goes in waves and you will be sad sometimes and it's incredibly important that you take time to sit with your feelings and just let them happen. Feel the pain, feel the burn, feel the anger, feel the sadness, feel the loss, feel every single thing that needs to be felt because if you hold it all in you might get sick it's going to come out in a different way um, it could really be harmful to your health to your body to your life overall because you're not going to be able to really attract any positive things into your life or even recognize when something positive is happening if you're still holding on to all of that and the only way to do that really is to sit with it, cry it out, um, anger it out, <laughs> just scream it out, you know, and um, vent it out. I usually do it with someone around um, who I trust so that you don't feel 100% alone and also so that you don't stay in it. Because sometimes when you do it alone, it's really hard to get out of it after. So um, I cry with my mom. I um, talk to my friends about it. Uh, it's about um, reaching out to those people, to your support system that you have and letting them be there for you. And um, yeah, I know it sucks. I, I know, I hate emotions and I hate having to deal with feelings, but it's very important. Um, spending time with friends and loved ones, this goes hand in hand. Uh, if you're really having a bad day, reach out to a friend. Let them know, hey, I'm really having one of those days. Um, I need to get out and just go, even if it's out to get a bite to eat and that helps. It's all about just being able to get out there and not stay in and you get your mind off of it too because you don't always wanna be thinking about it, especially when you're going through that. You, you wanna have time where you can kind of forget what's happening and friends and family are the best way to do that. Um, just make sure that you have a really good support system nearby and uh, reach out to them and they will understand believe me i you know i have most of the people in my life haven't been through what i've been through but all i had to do was say hey are you busy i really really need to be with someone right now and for the most part they always would say yes and if they really can't then on to the next one you know um number five is self-care and love so that means that you need to know that some days you have to focus on you 100%. And that means, you know, face mask, um, light some candles, take a bath, uh, listen to some relaxing music, uh, eat your favorite food, just take care of yourself, take a nap. It, it's a day that you really should consider having. Um, if you're going through the grieving process, I would recommend at least once a week um, if that's not possible because your schedule is too hectic and you're staying busy, which is another one on the list and it is good, then um, just make sure that you balance it out because when you're grieving, if you don't balance it out, you're going to get overwhelmed and it's going to bubble up and it's going to butt you in the booty if you don't give it the time that it needs. So take care of yourself because no one else knows what your needs are but you. And if you don't take care of yourself, you're gonna get sick. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, number six is change things up. So um, it really helps to have like a change of scenery. And if you can't afford to go on a trip, that really could be solved by 
doing something minimal but still effective like you could dye your hair that's not gonna help as much but that's something maybe go on a little baby road trip around the same state or city that you live in go like to a different area um sometimes i like to just go check out new little cute places around my area that you'd never know if you just don't go and look um you can adopt a pet that's what i did i got a dog and she's been a wonderful addition to this family and i can 100 percent say that she helps lift my mood up animals are amazing i call them angels and they for sure always help when you're going through tough times they can sense sadness and if you're crying or if you're going through a tough time and you really don't want to reach out to anyone they're going to be there for you so that helps um there's a million other things that you can do just switch it up a little bit so that it's not all so stuck like the energy won't be stuck and you won't feel like you're stuck or overwhelmed or in prison which is honestly like the the vibe you get like the feeling i don't know how to explain it grieving is weird number seven is understanding that you're going to want to give up sometimes when my dad passed away i decided i wasn't going to sing anymore and singing was my passion it, it is my passion it was my dream to be able to work in music and i just stopped i stopped making music i stopped singing and you know i'm back to it now but it's okay you know you just lost someone incredibly important in your life and if you really need to take a break from something even if it's something that you know you love understand yourself be really understanding with yourself and just say okay let's take the time off i'll come back if and when i want to don't make yourself go through everything because you've already had to go through something that you had no choice in that has affected your life immensely and we change after we lose someone and it's okay to change and it's okay for your dreams to change in my case i got back to it because i found the correct singing teacher that was able to bring out the joy in singing again um and that was one of my little miracles that my mom helped me out with but once again it's up to you and it's okay to let go of some things that maybe the old you would have wanted and maybe you now you know you don't feel like it's your thing and that's okay uh Number eight is don't let go of things that will have a long-term effect. Um, so based on a meltdown, because the thing is you're gonna have a lot of meltdowns. They will happen. You're just gonna freak out because you're dealing with loss and grief and it's so weird and it's so different from every, anything you've ever dealt with before, any kind of sadness you've ever felt, any kind of anger you've ever felt that you will have meltdowns and when you have those meltdowns you're gonna want to give up on things like we just talked about but don't give up on for instance school do not give up on school don't drop out of school don't just quit your job based on a meltdown don't do that that will be something that you will regret and that will ultimately hurt you in the process when actually when my dad passed away going back to school was one of the best things that I could have done even though it was you know it was hard and I was grieving and I was sad it helped because I had a purpose if you take away everything that gives you purpose you're done you're absolutely done you need something that gives you a purpose whether that's your job or it's school do not give up on that do not do that to yourself because it's a huge mistake it's not the same thing as giving up on an ambition or a dream or changing the dream or changing the ambition that's okay but do not take away your daily purpose you need something that helps you get up in the morning and know hey i'm working towards something it's a huge difference um number nine is stay busy that goes for me hand in hand with school or work for me being able to once again have a purpose get up in the morning know that i have homework know that i'm working towards a degree that you know that i'm working towards something 
helped me even if I had lost passion even if I had lost happiness for a really long time it helps also it gets you out there you're talking to other people you're having to leave your house you're having to get ready it makes a huge huge impact in your life so make sure that you do that as much as you can stay busy get little projects here and there going which comes to number 10 which is let out your creative juices every once in a while so uh creativity really helps bring out your emotions sometimes when i'm really frustrated i'm feeling a lot of anger and i take it out on the people that i live with or on my friends i realize hey it's probably because i'm feeling something that's connected to what i'm going through which is the grief and so I take out like a little notepad and I either write my feelings down or or maybe I don't want to use words so I paint or I draw or I just scratch some colors in there with just anger or sadness and then I start crying. It's um, it's really therapeutic honestly being able to just get it out there using creativity using something different um, it helps you get emotions out so that's good. Um, and number 11, this is the hardest one to remember. I still struggle to remember this. One of the hardest things in this process is being able to really look at a bright side or a positive aspect of your life. And I would recommend baby steps though. You can start once a week and then build up to every single day. But I would recommend that you take a couple minutes every single day to write down or just think about things that you are grateful about in your life and this could be very simple things from just being able to have a home and a bed um, to hey I have friends and family that love me it can be whatever you want it can even be the same stuff every single day but as long as you take even just a couple minutes of your time to acknowledge that there are things going right in your life and it's not completely all lost it helps shift your mindset into a more positive outlook and it'll help you in the long run to be able to acknowledge when good things happen to you because sometimes even like the most wonderful thing could happen to you but because you're going through that grieving process and you haven't been focusing on the positive it'll be hard to even see it and be like oh hey there's something positive here what um number 12 remember to be patient with yourself you're going through a grieving process you're gonna be absolutely obnoxious and annoying your emotions are gonna be all over the place you're gonna change your mind a million times you might really sometimes have a huge temper because you're not dealing with your emotions and that is why we have the rest of the list. You really, really have to be patient with yourself. You have to understand that it doesn't just go away in the blink of an eye, but it really does get better if you follow all of these things that I've told you about. It really does get better. I 100% promise it's been two years now and I can actually talk about it without completely breaking down. I can look at his pictures and I don't feel like I'm gonna die inside. I have more of a purpose but i also have hope in the future and believe me it's so hard when you're going through this um and then number 13 which to me is the most important one and the one that's been the most successful um go to therapy getting therapy is for me has been a godsend um i have my therapist um which if you guys want i can link the uh link in the description but she she's incredible she does it over the phone so can be she can really can help anyone but she has really helped me cope and deal with all of my emotions and she's made it so that it doesn't feel I don't feel as empty as I used to I don't feel the burn that like burning sense that you feel when you lost someone or you're losing someone and it really is important to have someone who really understands and who can really help you get through it because at the end of the day you are moving forward because you're still alive and sometimes it's hard to move forward and, you, and your friends and family 
don't have those tools. That is all I have really come up with. Um, this has all been really helpful for me. I hope it'll be helpful for you guys. Let me know if you know of anything else that could help. Um, I'm thinking of making like a website where I can have those little links and have more information on how you can deal with grief because it's definitely something that a lot of people are going through and they're gonna wanna search just like I did. Anyways. Thank you so much for watching. If you got till the end of this, I'm sorry. I try to make it as short as possible. I hope this will help you. Let me know if it does. Let me know if you know of any other suggestions. And thank you very much. I will be making the video in Spanish very soon. Bye.